Hi, welcome to Thesis by Publication Q&A. And today's question is probably the question that I'm asked the most often. It certainly was the question that I wanted answered when I was completing my TBP. And if you're an advisor, you're probably also being asked this uh, from your from your students. So our question today is how many publications should I include in my thesis? So I'm going to just start by saying very clearly and apologizing because I'm not going to be giving you a very concrete answer, but what I'm going to be able to do is to show you what other candidates have done in terms of the number of outputs that they include in their TBP and some of the considerations that you should make because it is a very personal uh, answer. Okay, so firstly I'd like to introduce to you uh, two studies that analysed some thesis, theses by publication uh, in Australia. And the first was uh, published in 2018 and this was a quantitative study and Margaret uh, Merger and I uh, gathered as many uh, theses that included publications as we could. That wasn't an easy task, uh, but we managed to get our hands on 165 uh, from the humanities and social sciences. We found several hundred, but uh, we focused in this study on the humanities and social sciences because we are social scientists in the area of education and also because this is an area where the TBP is traditionally not very common, but where it, it is seeing a lot of growth. So we analysed uh, those uh, dissertations and we found that a TBP might include anything from 1 up to 12 uh, outputs, uh, an average of 4.5 and a mode of 4. And several years later, we, uh, we engaged on a quite a large uh, mixed method study where we surveyed uh, recent graduates, those who had successfully completed a TBP across all fields. Uh, again, we are focused on Australia. But from those 246 participants, they shared with us, with us information about their thesis and we found that they included anything from 1 up to 14 uh, outputs in their thesis, a mean of 5 and a mode again of 4. So the answer to our question, the only answer I can give very clearly is that you need at least one for it to be called, uh, defined as a thesis by publication uh, you need at least one. And a TBP a thesis by publication can make an original and significant contribution to knowledge, and this is the, the general uh, definition of, of doctoral research, even if it includes one publication. So uh, yeah, that, that is the, the only concrete answer that I'm going to give, that you need at least one. Now, the number of publications that you include will depend on many uh, different factors, which I will talk about in a moment, but they're going to affect uh, your thesis in several ways. So first, the weight that they play in the thesis. So if you have one publication, it might be reporting the results of your study, then obviously you're going to have to include generally as a traditional chapters, uh, all of the other information that you need. So of course your paper might have a short literature review uh, section, it will report your methods, but it won't be in the depth that you would generally uh, need uh, in a doctoral thesis. Uh, the other thing it will impact is how that you will how you will integrate those publications uh, into your thesis. So you may have, uh, again, a publication that's reporting results. 
you may have a, system, a systematic review that you could include within your literature review and how you're weaving uh, these uh, different documents together is also another challenge that you will need to, that uh, will become more complicated with the more uh, publications that you include. And it may affect, and that's why I have my little uh, asterisk here, it may affect the way in which a thesis is received by examiners. And there's some research to suggest that if a public a thesis sorry includes publications numerous publications then it may be seen more favor favorably uh, by examiners but we need to be very careful not to conflate quantity with quality and even if we are published to uh, three five ten publications uh, it does not negate critique it does not negate criticism or a requirement to revise published uh, published works. And if, in my case, uh, I have uh, I was required to make revisions on a publication that was set in concrete. Uh, so there are two versions floating around, one in my thesis and one. Uh, and actually the revisions that I gave were very uh, appropriate and they were thoughtful and I sometimes think, oh, I wish that I had that in my, uh, in my, in my original uh, published document. Uh, but this is the journey that we are going on and publication uh, is not necessarily, the, well, it's not the end of the journey. It does, however, add a layer of quality control. Uh, it for the participants or the candidates who are who I talk to, they often talk about a sense of what's the word, some kind of peace of mind, uh, because it has been reviewed, it's been looked at, it's been critiqued by other people. Uh, that doesn't mean that our assessors won't have their own critique, but it has already gone through a process external to the supervisor. Uh, so that feeling of, of quality control uh, is quite uh, helpful for our for, for candidates adopting the TBP. So you are going to want to think about the number that you, that is appropriate to you. And as I said, uh, it might be one, it might be 14, it might be more than that. What you don't want to get stuck on is making comparisons with yourself. That's a dangerous game to start uh, in academia. I think I, en I ended up with seven in my, uh, in my thesis and I was really proud of that. And then I saw another thesis that had 10 and I was thinking, oh my God. Uh, so don't compare yourself is my first uh, piece of advice learn from uh, from my mistakes but there are some things that you're going to want to consider so the first thing is your career goals and uh, just to use me as, as an example i wanted a career in academia i was a, a middle school teacher i wanted to move into teacher education in universities I looked at the, the job advertisements and you need a PhD and you need publications. So this was a really big factor in me uh, choosing the TBP, but also wanting to really get a, as many publications as I could. And then the personal situation. So again, in my case, uh, I was uh, a part-time candidate because I was raising small children. And so I did have that extra time. Uh, to go through the process. We'll talk about that uh, in a moment. Next is your skills, your knowledge uh, and attributes. And these are all things that will influence how easy it is for you to write, to publish, to get over any uh, rejections and, and process that psychologically. Uh, you may have already been publishing uh, you may be inside academia already and have some of the knowledge, but it, for others it might take a, a, a little bit of time for you be, to be able to get started. Uh, obviously, institutional guidelines are going to help. Our definition, and you can check out our earlier video 
Uh, our definition of the TBP says one, that's the minimum. This makes a TBP, uh, but institutional guidelines might say that you need X number of publications. And, and of course, the support that you receive, the, the quality uh, and the type of support that you are given will help or impede, uh, if, if it's not there, the number of publications uh, that you can that you can get done. Uh, of course, the supervisor is really important in a TBP. It is likely that you will be publishing with them. It's very, very common, and we'll make another video uh, about that, but it's extremely common for a supervisor to, to co-author uh, with their students. Um, but the expectation of how many uh, or what type of publications um, will will depend on on their expectations and, and the support that they are willing and able to provide. Uh, your field and your study design will also play a role. Uh, there are some fields, for example, where uh, open review is very common. In my field, it is, everything is blind review. Um, but in open review, uh, and I have a friend in, I'll be vague in biology, and he had said that he'd, he'd, he'd submitted a paper to a prestigious journal, but he said he won't get it because uh, of he, no one knows who he is. And I was very surprised because the blind review is very common uh, in education. But also what that means is that a reviewer is looking at me not as an early career researcher or as a doctoral researcher, but as a researcher. Uh, and of course, we need we need to have the same level of quality. But when you submit a traditional thesis, uh, you're benchmarked as a doctoral researcher. So th this is a, an element, uh, uh, an element of uh, makes it a little bit more complicated. And with your study design, there are some types of studies that are more open to uh, a, a more wider range of publications. So if you have a, uh, a mixed method study, maybe you can get a publication that's reporting your qualitative and your quantitative uh, results. If you have a longitudinal study, maybe you uh, can, can uh, publish a different uh, uh, times along the journey. Some public, some uh, methods are more uh, readily accepted by journals than others. We know that positive results are more likely to be published than null results. In some fields, qualitative, uh, quantitative results are more likely to be accepted. We know that it's really difficult to get um, interdisciplinary research published in the right channel. So these are things that, that will also impact that, that magic number that you're looking for. Of course, time. Some fields, some journals take a long time to go through the process. It's many months before a paper can be sent uh, to, to be sent to review, to be reviewed, back to editorial, perhaps some editorial um, discussions. And then Quite likely, uh, not just as a doctoral researcher, but as an academic, it's likely that you will get a rejection throughout some time uh, throughout your, your doctoral journey. And that takes time, first the time to process that, uh, and then uh, the time to uh, revise, change, uh, choose your next journal, uh, revise your paper so it suits that new journal and then of course to get it under review one more time. And then it's a little bit of luck um, whether you get the right uh, journal the, the first time, uh, you, it's a paper that they're interested in at that particular time, they haven't just published something very similar, you get a reviewer that's uh, you know not in a bad mood or the you know, the dreaded reviewer too. And so there is an element of, unfortunately, uh, of luck in there as well. So I'm very sorry that I haven't been able to give you that concrete, that nice round number that maybe the 
you were wanting to hear. But hopefully I've given you some food for thought in thinking about what that number, what the goal might be for you. And also to be a little bit flexible if that changes uh, throughout the process because it is quite an unpredictable uh, process. So I think the important thing to remember is that doctoral education is a process not a product and that can be easy to lose sight of with a TBP because we are often uh, thinking about the product of getting the publication, of getting the acceptance, but really doctoral education is about that journey of learning to be a researcher. And every journey is unique and every TBP is unique. So your ability to complete your research, to confer your degree, to make an important contribution to your research field is really secondary to that number. So thanks very much and see you next time.